Okay. Um, all right. So next video. Um, now we're going to process the files. We've um, we've done done everything that we need to do in Adobe Camera Raw at this stage. Um, we set our star ratings, and um, before we do that, we just need to make sure that we're processing to the right DPI and with the right embedded profile. Um, this number here. Anthea, five seven six zero is very important. It's it's the number you put in um, in the next step, which I'll show you, <clears throat> uh, to unify the pixel sizes <clears throat> for when you process your files to PSD. Um, and by unify, I mean when you crop an image, um, the pixel dimensions will change. That number there, 5760, is how many pixels your camera takes. Um, and if we do a crop, we want to unify everything back to um, that 5760. So to do our DPI and profile, we need to click on this little bit here. And we need to make sure resolution of 300 is written in and that your profile is set to Adobe RGB. Okay. Um, I do it slightly different. I process in Profoto, but um, you're going to do it in Adobe RGB. There's no reason to overcomplicate things. Um, so make sure this is Adobe RGB and six, 16 bits and 300 DPI. That's all you have to remember at this stage. Once you set this in Camera Raw, it won't change unless you change it. It will always be that unless you change it. And if you change it, it will always be what you've changed it to. But if you set this up once, you'll never have to do it again. Um, so if I just press OK on that, you'll see now that I've got an Adobe RGB image. It's 16 bit. It's 5760 pixels. And it's at 300 DPI. Um, that's what you want it to be. Um, I'm going to just change it back to the pro photo because I do, I, I have to, um, I run a different process over stuff. Um, so I'm going to go pro photo, press OK. So we've gone through, we've done all our color. We've checked that our output, um, pro ICC, so our output ICC profile and DPI is correct. And then we, we don't press open, we press done. Open will open them all up one by one in Photoshop and ruin your day. Pressing done, we'll just update them into the thumbnails and bridge. Um, so that is done. Now, now I'm going to turn off my um, second serial number filter so that I'll get the whole shoot. And I'm going to go Control A and I'm going to select every single image. And then I'm going to use my image processor to process these to 16 bit PSDs. And to do that, I just go Tools, Photoshop image processor and that will open up Photoshop and before it starts processing we'll get the window that pops up that tell, uh, where we can put in our DPIs um, so for example um, at the moment um, so this is what I see so I have two different output profiles one for Adobe one for sRGB depending on what people want um, so we do your stuff in Adobe and we need we, you need to choose PSD, this one here, and you need to choose resize the fit, and you need to type in both boxes that 5760 amount in both boxes. 5760. Okay, so now that means it'll open up each file, it'll size it to 5760 pixels on the longest side, which is what your camera shoots at. And then it'll say it'll save it as a PSD with Adobe RGB because we set that in the preview in Camera Raw. Um, and if you have any croppings, it will ap still apply that five seven sixty pixels. It interpolates it up to everything. So every file is the exact same pixel length, and that's important for when we do sharpening because when we do sharpening, if we have less pixels it over sharpens. So we need to unify our pixels at this stage um, for any cropping that may have occurred in Adobe Camera Raw. 
um, which I'll run through. There's certain things I'll run through in another video, which will be um, fill light, um, recovery, cropping, and ang uh, fixing angles. Um, that'll be in another video to come. So for, for this one, we press run and it will open up every file and save it as a PSD at 5,760 pixels on the longest side. If I go back to bridge, you'll see it's created the PSD folder. It will always do that. So you don't have to worry when you run the image processor, it will always create a folder for the type of derivative that you're creating, whether it's a JPEG, whether it's a PSD, whether it's a TIFF, it, it will just name the folder what, what the derivative type is. So if I go into this folder now, um, you can see uh, the PSD is being created. They have the labels on and, every, and everything that you need. Um, and once these finish processing, uh, that's when that's when we use our droplets. That's when we use our our zero stop, half stop, one stop, one and a half stop processors to actually process the files and do everything in Photoshop, which I'll I will do in the next video. Okay.